Hi, I'm Mel from MyDaysMy.com and today I am really excited to be heading down to the Sprucefield Centre in Lisburn for the launch of the brand new Mother Care store there and I'm going to be catching up with Mylene Class and she is going to talk me through the latest BBK collection. So, exciting times, ready? Let's go. So here I am in the new Mother Care store in Sprucefield and I've caught up with the lovely Mylene. Um, and she's going to have a little chat with us about the latest BBK range. Sir? Yeah. The store here is massive. There are loads and loads of clothes. What would you say are the key trends this season? Well, for BBK, I can talk about BBK. Um, we've got a lot of knowledge. It's um, monochrome, as uh, BBK is very much known for that. Uh, there's a really cute gingham um, short set, which is so pretty. Uh, a lot of lemon, wearing this season's colour yes. myself. For the boys, I'm always told by mums of boys, um, I have two girls, but I have a lot of godsons, four godsons, uh, they want more colour. It can't always just, always just be navy and grey, navy and grey. So there's a lot of colour injected into the BBK boys collection. And we now go up to eight years old. Yes, I've seen that because I have two boys myself and um, I know that you've won awards in the past for yeah, your boys, the boys. Range, so that's brilliant. Well, you know, what do you think of the boys? The boys range is good. I definitely think um, both the BBK collection and Mother Care as a whole do do a better range of boy clothes than some of the other high street stores. Um, do you find you have to work harder to yes. come up with fresh new ideas yes. for the boys? Yes. 100%. The girls just feels like it just flows, but I think that's just girls' wardrobes in general. We have a bigger choice of colours and styles and shapes and all sorts, and that just doesn't change whether you're, you know, zero years old or you're, you know, you're in your thirties. However, and you've got two girls yourself, and I've got two girls, but at the same time, I think with the boys' styles. Um, <laughs> You've got the jeans, you can it's change the colour of the jeans, but at the same time, you're not going to change the shape. No. I mean, within the structure of having the two legs, you know, with girls, the skirts can alter and the, 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 the length and, and yes. you, you can go on and on. But with the boys, yeah, you are, you are slightly limited. So you, that, it's good because it pushes you more. And to win the awards, especially for the boys' clothes, I think we've won four awards now, wow. um, for the boys specifically, that's... It says we're on the right path, and to hear it from a mum of two boys, well then that's the, the ultimate accolade, so thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Do your girls have a say in your designs whenever you're working on a new collection? Oh, yes. Do you ask their opinion? Or oh, I've got to do, do more than that. <laughs> so my girls, yes, they're, they're like my little muses, because I, I learn from them anyway. So um, one of my girls, my eldest, uh, she's like, she must hear, she must pick it up from me, she hears me saying, you know, black is very chic, and so I say, what the hell do you like? She'll say, you should put some black in because it's very chic. Oh, bless her. And hero cannot get enough of glitter, so uh. if I covered something in glitter, it probably still wouldn't be enough. Glitter and fluff <laughs> and feathers. Aww. So, yeah, um, I, I, I listen to what they have to say, especially when it comes to the practicality, it's like it, when it comes to back neck labels and yes. the lace. There was a, a, a phase a few years ago when um, everything in fashion was being cut at that awkward, at that awkward uh, stage just for even it. for women. Just below the elbow. And so we were looking at it for girls, but then I'd see here I was pulling things down all the time because it just didn't feel right, and yes. I learned from that. So, and at the same time, I do like mini focus groups in my house, just again Aww. by osmosis, <laughs> listening to the girls and their friends and my oh, godsons all yeah. saying what they like. I want something with more dragons on it, or more dinosaurs, <laughs> or I want something with a big, big frou frou skirt. So it's, you just learn as you listen and watch and observe. Brilliant. Um, I also seen that last year you started to introduce a range of BBK interiors. Yes. Is that something that you're going to be developing further? Well, we have now gone from zero, it started zero to three, then to five, and now it's to eight in the clothes. Then we developed buggies, which was fantastic, which came with um, the, the bag, <laughs> as it's known. Have you got the bag? And everyone knows what you're talking about. So I had um, feeding bags and then went straight to nursery. It seemed like um, the most um, obvious evolution. That's what people were crying out for. So. Um, carts and wardrobes and stands, hangers, frames. It was so. It's, it's been so exciting, and the reaction's been brilliant. Uh, the first range sold out so quickly that we, we couldn't reproduce it quick enough. So um, we're, we're more prepared this time, and um, because it's international as well, um, the expectations that the international community want from your designs. Uh, it, it pushes you on to really think outside the box and provide something different for mums in their sleep-deprived state. 
So you're definitely not the sort of person that's going to rest on your laurels. You're not going to say, no. I'm doing quite well now, because you personally have, you know, quite a few projects going on. Well, do, you really, do you really thrive on kind mm. of being busy and, and having lots to do? I love doing to. ever think, I'm going to cruise this year. <laughs> Are you looking it's for really a new funny, challenge? It's really funny, because you feel like in order to pacify so many, you have to say, okay, I'm, I'm done now. I'm going to retire or go. <laughs> and that to me that's that's not how that's how I, not how I view success for myself you know some that's, that's their perfect dream but if I sat and didn't do anything with a cocktail as nice as it sounds for maybe the first two weeks as a holiday I don't I couldn't do it for the rest of my life I like to be um active and and quite frenetic and live my life literally hanging on like you know, to the cliff with my nails, the <laughs> cliff edge. But I like it, and it keeps me motivated and excited. I love the challenge of it all, and the girls love it too. And you know, I, I do things that I enjoy now. It's nice to be able to choose the jobs yes. that I want to do. And I genuinely love what I do. Good. Um, but as a working mum, it must be hard, and that must come with its own <coughs> set of challenges that yeah. you know, lots of working mums out there will understand. Is there one part of being a working mum that you you struggle with the most? Is there one thing that you could pick that you would say? Oh God, one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, it's a hard question. I could go. I could do a hundred. Do a hundred. Uh, I, I think every mum working, non-working, because you can't say a mum isn't really working. Because no, but I, from the minute you wake up. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to go to work and have the break there, you know, and actually drink a hot coffee because I'm never at home. Um, or maybe are you one of these people that can get by on like five or no, six hours well, sleep, no, or are you still an hour girl? I really, <laughs> I need eight hours and I never get eight hours. I don't remember the last time I had eight hours. I don't sleep anymore, so yeah, I've had to give that up. <laughs> Not willingly, trust me. I'm kicking and screaming. And I even said to my little one the other day, I was like, you know can't keep getting out of bed in the morning because it's not the morning. Oh. It's two o'clock, it's four o'clock to tell me she's got tickly toes. Oh bless or, her. But I'm like, you've got <laughs> school. You, you're gonna be you're gonna be falling asleep at school. You know, I will come and get you out of bed. I'll tell you when it's time to get up and we've done the clocks that tell you when it's time yes. to get up and we've done the leaving the blinds open so the lights shining through. Nothing works because in their heads when it's time to get up. It. Doesn't just matter just if you went to bed at one o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh bless. So what do you do then if you need a little bit of time to chill out and relax? What's your do you ha do you my, ever get any time to relax? Not much, but my my time where I'm happiest, um, where I feel relaxed is when I've got time with my children and my family. When I'm with my family, and, and I don't have to look at the phones or answer emails. Like when I've got my weekends, I, I make that that's that cut off to myself. Yes. I leave all emails and correspondence and any phone calls that might need a desperate answer. I just that's it. It's my weekend with my children that we just cut off completely and holidays cut off completely. And you know when they're home from school, I, I really make sure. And it's it's my absolute it's the rule of the house. One of the rules of my house. You sit down at the table. We talk. We chat. We go through our day. We all share our day. And, and yeah, that's I, really that to good. me is so important. Breakfast and dinner so important. That's where we all regroup. Yeah. And fight and cry I make, and laugh. I make everybody sit around the dinner table in our house too. They don't always appreciate it, but I make them do it. <laughs> well, I, they will one day because I didn't appreciate it. I really didn't. I, you know, it was a Sunday. I want to go out to my friends and my mum and dad were like, you are sitting at home. You will be a part of this family. And now I, I'm, I feel so fortunate they did that because... You, you know, you, that's where you your have good memories of growing up. Their foundations, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, when the girls are like sitting there not eating their dinner and you're, you're trying to rush it along, get them to bed. But it's such, it's this how it's when I'm happy, my happiest. And are you quite good at switching your old phone off then? Because I see you're quite active on social media, your Instagram account, you're quite active on Twitter. Do you switch that off? Well, it needs to be switched off. You can. It is off. Good. Um, <laughs> but it's really addictive, isn't it? Well, do you know? I think you, you can fall into that habit of I'm just going to answer this one thing. I'm just going to. I've just got to take this call. And actually, nobody gets the best of you. Then you know, we, people who are speaking to me trying to get these very important answers from in, when they're in Hong Kong. I'm like trying to then try and you know build a Viking ship at the same time. <laughs> it, it, nobody's getting the best of me. So I have learned actually to go right. This is what we're doing now. This can wait and. We'll make the phone call afterwards. But I have got a very good habit now where my management company will say, well, suddenly we know when you put the girls to bed because it's 7.30, we'll get a whole like, plethora, a <laughs> whole shed load of emails will suddenly just come firing through until one o'clock answering oh, all the questions. Oh, uh, Well, listen, 
thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. And That's it's all. Been great thank to you. see around the new store here in Lisburn and lovely to see the BBK range. And I'm heading off now and I'm going to try to go out of this store with some money left in my purse. <laughs> <laughs>